So this video is to explain to you how to use the Genetics and Evolution Android app on your computer. Now I'm assuming two things. I'm assuming that you've downloaded the Genetics and Evolution Android app onto your computer. and That's what you can see over here in this folder. And I'm assuming that you've installed the program BlueStacks into your computer, which is an Android emulator. Supposedly this will run on both PC and Mac. I'm demonstrating it here just with respect to the, the PC. So the first thing you do once you have it there, I have here the, the apps that were installed automatically with uh, BlueStacks, and I have this one. You literally just double click on it, and you notice it's, it's assigned an Android package file uh, tag because of its extension. Just double click on it, and that should begin the installation process onto your device. You see there, installing APK. So let that go for a couple of, uh, you know, maybe a minute or so. I'm going to pause the video until it's done, and we'll continue from there. So this is uh, about a minute later. Uh, you'll notice now that it's it's finished installing because here in the apps folder you have a genetics and evolution uh, shortcut. So if you want to run the program, go ahead and click on that or double click on that. Sometimes you may have to do it more than once. I've noticed sometimes it's a little bit buggy in that regard, but often it works just with the first double click. So let's try it right now and see what happens. So this is open the BlueStacks app player. And there it is. There's the genetics and evolution app. So just to walk you through some of the basic functionality, I don't want to spend a lot of time on this because I'm sure your time is tight. This tells you a little bit about the app itself. Uh, right now, as of the time of recording this, when you click on the online manual, it actually takes you to the one for the iOS version rather than the Android one, but we're planning to update that as soon as possible. You'll probably be interested in trying out the self-test quiz. This is because there's a lot of terms associated with genetics, so this is your chance to try things out. So let's look at this one, the specific physical or recombination location of a gene or other DNA sequence on a chromosome. I'm going to do the wrong thing first just to demonstrate. I'm going to click phenotype, and it tells me that's incorrect, so I can try again. So now I'll say locus. It'll tell me that's correct, and I'll go on to the next question. So very simple. Well, I think most people are going to be interested, and I'll go back to some of the other features in just a second. I think most people are going to be interested in this problem generator. My students always tell me they want to have more practice problems. So yes, this starts with a Hardy-Weinberg practice problem, but I think people very likely, if they're taking my class, will be starting with genetic cross-mapping. So just double-click on that and go to this. So this gives you gamete counts from a test cross uh, associated with a heterozygous individual. So you just click Generate and there's a set of numbers and what you're supposed to do is look at this figure it out on your own piece of paper and when you have the answer what you want to figure out is you want to figure out the, the gene order, the gametic phase and the recombination rates between each gene uh, each pair of genes click show answer and there they are in this case little b, little a uh, are with capital C for phase and big, uh, big B and big A are with lowercase c we see the gene A is in the middle and this gives us the recombination fractions and we can just do this over and over again. This, this particular example now is one where uh, two of the genes are unlinked. So we see that, that uh, gene B is on a different chromosome, or at least unlinked, maybe not on a different chromosome, but at least unlinked from genes A and C, but A and C are linked to each other. And you can just keep doing this over and over again, and it generates new ones each time. It's not taking from a subset, so you can do this and have literally an infinite number of practice problems. So you can do this for genetic cross-mapping, you can do it for Hardy-Weinberg as it, as it showed initially there. It'll generate these, in this case you're, you're looking at the observed and expected genotype frequencies, check the answers. So this is, this is the, the practice problem thing. There's also a feature over here on the side if you want to generate multiple practice problems and you just put in you know, a file name, you make up a file name, test.txt, and say how many you want to generate to and then click generate. But th that's, just, that's just another thing you, you might want to do. The other thing you might want is the, the what I call the cheater part of the app. If you have some practice problems, this is a problem solver. So you could type into this one, for example, uh, 250, 500, 250, solve. And it'll give you the observed and expected allele frequencies and things like that. So this is a way to check if something's at Hardy-Weinberg. It'll do the same thing for, gen for genetic cross-mapping, for breeder's equation to estimate heritability, et cetera, et cetera. So there's, again, there's a lot of functionality here, both for, for uh, solving problems you already have or for generating practice problems. Now, there's two demonstration things in the app, and there's a cross simulator and allele freak. Uh, introductory level thing will be cross simulator. This is set up, it defaults to a P in one gene, but that's not very interesting. Let's do two genes. 
So I just click on that to two, to two traits. This assumes the genes are, are, are unlinked from each other. And we'll go ahead and do it with the P just for simplicity. So let me just set these up here. So now we're going to do a case where it's heterozygous. Big A, big B over little A, little B. Uh, where is that? There it is. So there's a heterozygote one cross to homozygous for the two recessives. So we can click that. Next. And it gives you all the proportions. Very nice, huh? And you can just you can keep doing it over and over again and change you know what you're crossing to what. You can change whether it's X-linked or autosomal. And if you don't like peas, you can go ahead and try something different. You can try clovers, you can try little snowmen or bearded dragons, <laughs> things like that. And in each case it gives you a different array of uh, phenotypes for each one. In this case it's it and it tells you right off the bat here which allele is dominant, which one is recessive. So that's for the cross simulator. Allele freak is nice because this is this is uh, simulating what happens uh, when you have different fitnesses associated with genotypes uh, looking over time. So zero in this case means an infinite population size. So let's make a, fi a finite population size of say 100. Let's make one allele slightly less fit. Actually, I'm gonna make this 50 rather than 100. And let's look over the course of a thousand generations. So in this case, there's there's one genotype here that's a little bit less fit. These two are maximally fit. We have a small population size. So a graph. And just see the graph. You click over here to allele graph. And, and there it is. We see it bounced around and then went to allele frequency of zero pretty quickly. Now we can do this over and over again. I'll graph, graph, graph. Now we should have four of them. And we see in some cases it went to zero. In some cases it went to 100%, even though there was a disadvantage. This is giving the allele frequency of, um, I think it's a little late in this case. Anyway, this is just a quick demo to show you some of the features associated with this app. Spend some time trying it out. Uh, talk to some of your friends doing it. The iOS one uh, is, is, you know, is something else you can you can compare it to if you have that sort of device. But overall, I hope you enjoy this. Thank you.